If we uh, speak about the post-war uh, period, uh, uh, still, when the Stalin was alive, the general attitude to religion was softened somehow. I don't know why. Some people say because of the without the help of uh, the religious um, people, religious organizations, it was difficult to win during the war. Um, so uh, Stalin needed to have some support from the religious uh, faith which uh, were prevalent in Russia. And after the opening of the two small monasteries, uh, again it became a bit easier. But outside of these monasteries, uh, the situation was really very hard. And when people uh, tried to uh, to use what uh, was called in the Constitution the freedom of faith, freedom of consciousness, the consequences were severe. Uh, so many people remember the last uh, case with the Buryat Lama Dandaron, which uh, um, uh, Dandaron was a teaching group of Buddhologists of uh, Russian people, Lithuanian people, Ukrainian and Buryats uh, working in the Soviet uh, institution after, uh, after he was released from the concentration camp, concentration camp for the third time. He, had, he spent 19 years in, this, in prison. Uh, but uh, when uh, this group became uh, noted, uh, everybody we were arrested, uh, Dandaron received four years of prison and uh, his main disciples placed to the psychiatric houses. It was 1974. Uh, uh, so people were that much afraid of uh, being persecuted for anything that uh, when in 1978 I and with my friends went to research the spiritual teacher, it was very difficult to, uh, uh, to find the trust in people because they didn't know who are you, why do you want to know this. Uh, so only after some time you get some trust you can receive some information uh, where the knowledgeable people, knowledgeable in Buddhism, uh, could be found. People were so much afraid. Well, uh, I myself uh, was also afraid, of course, because my job was the only job, the only thing I uh, could have uh, and support my family with two children was working in this Museum of History Religion, which was uh, the place, the central place for the atheism in, in St. Petersburg and maybe in the whole of Russia, because we had more specialists on religion and atheism than uh, in Moscow. And of course I had to keep it uh, secret, and I remember uh, once uh, at some uh, meeting when the, the plans of museum were discussed, I was standing in my rosary in the, with my rosary in the pocket, but my pocket was thorn, and the rosaries came out. And <laughs> one lady who was sitting nearby, who was the secretary of party organization, <laughs> took the <laughs> rosaries from the other end, so I felt the <laughs> pressure. Of course, I was <laughs> uh, very much uh, afraid that my career is finished, but she was a nice lady and uh, she didn't tell anybody. <laughs> 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 yes, and uh, when I was invited to Buryatia, for example, and uh, I was asked, um, 
because I, I studied iconography, you know, and uh, I was uh, one of the few specialists in iconography in, in the Soviet Union. So I was asked to be head of uh, the commission to describe the religious uh, monuments of the Ivalginsky Datsan, because new law was issued that all the painting statues were to be registered by the government, what is available, what is not. So when I went there, the local uh, KGB people tried to stop me by all means. They said uh, to this uh, uh, Council of Religious Affairs that they had so much material on Terentiev. Terentiev should not be allowed to go to the monastery. And I had very difficult time there. Uh, but then, uh, after a few years, uh, when uh, even a little bit before Gorbachev, the whole atmosphere was more relaxed. These KGB people were not so angry as before. They were just laughing. They said, oh, you are doing this thing, do not do it. And, so, uh, and then it became easier.